Is absurdity absurdist or is it also surrealist? I feel like the whole thing about surrealism is that it feels like it has a point. It's just not a rationally accessible point. But absurdity is it just absurd. The reaction to, absurd to absurdity is this. And the reaction to surrealism is this. Hey, Hodinky, I'm a watch guy. My husband, not so much. He wears a Fitbit. Is it wrong to buy him a timepiece for, say, our fifth anniversary, knowing he won't wear it, but that ultimately it will look great on me? Is it wrong to steal candy from a baby? If your family is starving, is it wrong to steal a loaf of bread? And what if they don't like bread? What if they like uh, cigarettes? So the reason I'm quoting The Simpsons is because this question reminds me of uh, something that happens in an episode of The Simpsons. Uh, it's Marge's birthday, and Homer wants a new bowling ball. So he buys a bowling ball, and he puts it in a box, and he wraps it up, and he gives it to Marge, and he says, happy birthday. And Marge opens it up and goes, mm. and Homer looks at her and says, well, if you don't want it, I know someone who does. Of course it's wrong. Uh, I mean, and I feel like you probably knew that when you asked the question. I mean, if there wasn't some little voice in the back of your head saying, what are you doing? Do you want to stay in a relationship even? Uh, you, wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't have sent us this question. I mean, you buy a gift for somebody because it's for that person. You don't try to like stealth in a watch pur purchase on somebody else's birthday or anniversary or you know, whatever the occasion is. It's, it's really a question of whether or not you want to stay in a relationship at all. I mean, uh, think of what is going to happen uh, when it becomes clear to your, um, to your partner that this is the plan that you had in mind all along. And I, I think it's probably going to occur to them immediately the moment that they see that, that their present is actually something that you want. So I would say uh, leave uh, the poor Fitbit wearing person alone. Let them be happy with their Fitbit. Buy yourself a watch if that's what you want to do. And if it works within your, I assume, sh you know, shared budget and get them something they actually want. Come on. Hey, Hodinky. I love my Rolex day date, but I'd love it even more if the days were in Spanish. How can I get a day wheel and Espanol? I mean, I love my Rolex day date also. You know, so I share your positive feelings about the Rolex day date. There is a non-zero possibility that you can actually get this done at a Rolex service center. You know, a date wheel has seven days on it, uh, regardless of the language. I actually have an ask out to uh, Rolex USA uh, to confirm that, and I have not heard back from them as of uh, this recording because in classic Jack fashion, I waited to prep for this shoot until the last minute. Um, so for that, I apologize. I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm all about the honesty. Anyway, if I do hear back from Rolex uh, before we actually put the, set this episode live, I will uh, give you a definitive answer in the comments. But it's, uh, it's not a complicated thing to do technically. You basically just take the movement out of the case, swap out the date wheel, and uh, you're good to go. Hey, Hotinky, let's imagine an ethical dilemma. What would you do if you came across a $100,000 watch being sold at a garage sale for $100 by a family who clearly did not know what they had? I mean, what would I do? I'd rub my hands together gleefully and cackle gleefully in my best evil cartoon villain gleeful cackle way. Actually, you know what? I don't know. I mean, uh, if it's a garage sale and it's you know happening in front of a house that you know, kind of sends the message that the family is having a garage sale so they can maybe make rent the next month. And 100,000 bucks would mean financial security for a family that's never had financial security before in their entire life. Or maybe it's an estate sale that's taking place outside a $15 million mansion uh, out on Long Island and 100,000 bucks won't even cover the owner's dry cleaning bill for the year. I, it's just really, really context dependent question. I mean, I like to think that regardless of the apparent means or lack thereof on the part of the individual or individuals selling a $100,000 watch for a hundred bucks that I would do the right thing. And the right thing is, I think, uh, indisputably to um, tell them that the watch is worth a hundred thousand bucks and not a hundred bucks. I mean, if I'm honest with myself, I think that there's probably an excellent chance that I would just uh, take the money and run. But I like to think that I would at least think about doing the right thing, which is not the same thing as doing the right thing. Hey, Hodinky, why do seconds hands need a counterweight, but minute and hour hands do not? Technical answer ahead. Warning, warning, technical answer ahead. The reason that you have a counterweight usually on the seconds hand uh, is because of the difference between how the seconds hand is driven and the hour and minute hands are driven. So in a watch, you've you got a mainspring barrel, and then you have the center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel. Fourth wheel drives the escape wheel, and the escape wheel is part of the escapement. 
The wheels turn slightly faster as you go down the gear train. The center wheel turns once an hour, and the fourth wheel turns once per minute. So there's a lot of torque, relatively speaking, and slow movement at the center wheel, and uh, much less torque but much faster movement at the fourth wheel. The hour hand and the minute hand are both driven by the center wheel. They don't need counterweights, and they can be as big as you need them to be uh, to be legible, just because there's so much torque available at that point in the gear train. The fourth wheel, on the other hand, turns pretty rapidly. Uh, it has to be fairly light so that there's not too much inertia associated with keeping it rotating. And uh, if you put a seconds hand on the fourth wheel, which is what you do if you want a seconds hand, uh, it puts additional mass on the pivot of the, of the fourth wheel. And so um, it's nice if the uh, seconds hand is balanced a little bit or poised a little bit uh, so that the uh, extra load is distributed evenly. And that's the reason that you see a counterweight on a seconds hand. Oh, Mary, look at this. They found out that the watch that I sold for $100 is actually worth $100,000. We're, we're rich. The bank is saved. Was it a bank? Regardless of uh, whatever business it was that Jimmy Stewart uh, saved at the end of It's a Wonderful Life, uh, I would like you to help save our business by liking and subscribing. And uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.